Hey amazing artist, I'm in an organising mood today so I thought let's do some relaxing art and whilst I refresh my palette colour charts I would talk you through things about watercolours because we haven't talked about watercolours for a while and then I'll pick out some watercolour colour scheme and show you how I do that and then we can do some watercolour abstracts together. Maybe go grab your watercolour paints and you can play along with me. Now I have a habit of mixing and matching my watercolour paints, taking out pans from one palette and placing them in another. After a while of sort of doing this, I kind of lose track of, of where my colours are, which is not a good thing. <laughs> so I just wanted to take stock of where my colours are, what colours are in each of these palettes. Now the way I work with watercolours, I have say one or two active watercolour studio palettes so these will be palettes that I reach for. I also have a travel palette, not that it's getting that much use at the moment seeing as we're all indoors or you know not getting out and about as much but I actually use this palette quite a lot in the studio too. And then I have the extra palettes which look after the benched colours, you know, the ones that aren't my go-to colours at the moment, but it will mix around a bit. I kind of get very excited when I get a new watercolour, more so than any other paint. I'm not really sure why that is. They're like little magical sweeties <laughs> that you get to unwrap and then add water to and discover their true colour and their true nature. And I don't know, there's something quite magical about that. You probably know me more from my acrylics, especially if you've only recently joined my channel and haven't had a chance yet to look back at all the other videos on my channel. You will find watercolours on there as well because I do love using watercolours. This is a mixed media channel and I try to use all sorts of different medias. Mediums, medias, mediums. Swatching out what colours you have in a palette and making little colour charts is a great way to keep track of your colours and I'm using some cut down studio watercolour paper so this is just a very thin watercolour paper that I use for doing my doodles on, for just messing about with water reactive materials. If you're super efficient you can also write all the names of each colours on there too, which I'm actually not going to do today. I just literally want to map out where each of my colours are in each of these palettes. This is my travel palette. It's a super mini one and will sit very happily in a bag or in a pocket. And I did a whole video about how I kitted out this palette, how I got it 10 half pans into it instead of the 8 that it usually comes with. So if you're interested in getting yourself a nice little palette that you can just slip into a pocket and go out and do some quick art with, then go watch that video about this one once you finish this one. <laughs> Something really relaxing about swatching out your colours. And I tend to do this whenever I buy a new watercolour. I will swatch it out, see how it reacts to paper, see what it's like if it's opaque, transparent, how it lifts, all of those sorts of things. And I usually keep that information somewhere in a folder. But the actual palette itself needs its own little chart. It just makes it a lot easier to play with. And you can buy watercolours in pans or in tubes or even in bottles. So some of the paints here are ones that came as pans and then I've also got ones that came as tubes and I've put them into pans. So you're not seeing my tube collection, <laughs> all you're seeing is my half pan collection. I've got mostly half pans, a couple of whole pans too because you can get different sizes of watercolour pans. If you do buy them in tubes and then decant them into your pans then you can let them dry and use them just as you would use the pre-filled paint pans that you can buy. The benefit of having tubes over pans is that you can often get a larger amount of paint and just refill your pans if you like to use them from pans. That's quite handy. The benefit of having pans over tubes is that yeah, they're just easier to carry around and especially if you like to do art on the go. But really, if you have them in the tube format or in the pan format, it's kind of really up to how you like to use them. And you can use them straight out of the tube as well. You don't have to put them into pans. 
So you don't have to stick with one way over the other, you can mix and match and I do have a mix of tubes and pans so some of my favourite colours I will get in tubes and just refill my pans or use them straight from the tube. So I am actually on a colour hunt today and this is why I'm doing this reorganisation. I'm looking for a colour that just to spark my interest and get me inspired something that will kick off maybe a series of watercolours. So as I'm doing this, as I'm swatching out each of these and mapping out where all my colours are at the moment, I'm just looking for that colour that's going to get me working. And I think I might have found one. This cobalt turquoise has totally attracted my attention and I think I want to use it today. This is the one that I've kind of been looking for. But what to match it with? And now that I have my colour crib sheets for each of my palettes, I can quickly find some potential colour partners for this yummy colour. The first one I grab, I'm going towards a yellow colour to go with that lovely green, sort of bluey green colour. But I think that I won't go for an ordinary yellow, I want something with a bit of shine, a bit of sparkle, so I'm going to go for a gold. And I have a couple of golds to choose from, so these are iridescent colours. And I'm trying to actually use up my Prima marketing one, so that's the one I'm going to pick out for this. There's another colour that also sort of popped out to me that I think will go really well with these two colours that I've just picked, and that's an indigo colour. Indigo happens to be one of my favourite colours across the board, whatever, whatever paint we're talking about. So it seems like a natural partner for these two colours, and I'm going to finish it off with a really beautiful dark red colour. So now that I've cherry picked out my colours, I just want to swatch them out properly, work out what colours they are, they're all written, all the names of my colours are written on the side of the pans, and uh, I'll get a little help from my studio assistant Zizu. You'll see that I've got a mix match of different manufacturers for these, I don't really have a favourite manufacturer as such. I'm just going to go with these and mix and match them and see how they work together. And the first thing I'm going to do is a colour gradient of my colour combination just to see where we can go with it. And this is something you can do with any colours that you pick in any kind of paints that you're using. Just pick out some colours do like I did, do get a colour that's sparking your interest today and then maybe pick a couple more colours, two or three that you think will go with it and then just play, just play with that colour combo. Mix and match it, see how the colours work together, see how they work in partners, in threes, in fours, whatever you've picked. See if you can get some interesting colour mixes too. There's nothing like exploring colour than just actually doing it, just playing with the colours that you've got. So all paints have their own ways of being used, things that they like being used for, different finishes that you can get with them, and you learn a lot more about them and get more comfortable with them by just playing with them and seeing what they can do. Now I'm using these colours straight from the pan today and I'm not diluting them out on a palette first. So if you want more control over your paint, particularly with watercolour paint, then lay down some colour on your palette and then from there you can add more water to it or you can add more paint to it and get different types of intensities of the paint. And it also helps you not to oversaturate the watercolours. But I'm pretty happy to go with full intensity today, I really want to see how these layer, what kind of glorious colour I can get from them at full strength. Now I really love how this colour combo is working very much fits within my dual colour love. I do love dual colours and I think that may be how I picked out all of these colours. Kicking off from that lovely turquoise colour that just sort of set me going.
So I keep on playing it and see where it can take me. As I sort of move through these little swatches and little plays, little abstracts, I add more water as I go. So that first one was very intense and it was more pigment than water. And then as I go to the second one, I start seeing how the colours, how the watercolour paints move around a bit more, add more water to them. By the time I get to the third piece, I'm adding a lot more water. Even seeing how these work in wet, so I've already wetted the surface and then add in the colour on top. And working out the proportion of water to pigment is pretty key when you're using watercolours. You can get so many different looks and finishes by changing up how much water you use with them. So here I'm really looking for how the colours mix together, where there might be some unexpected colour mixes. I'm also looking for different textures as well, spotting where the blooms occur or where the featherings occur. How much water I need to add to each of those to get those kind of effects and you're really kind of feeling it out as you go. Once I've got a feel for this group of colours and how they work together and how much water I need to use with them, then I went on to do some more mini abstracts and some doodling with these watercolours. But maybe that's a video for another time. So if you feel like doing some watercolour exploration today, Go start by swatching out your colours and, and pick out some colours that are really speaking to you. Then just have a play with them, swatch them out again and then just sort of mix them up, see how they work together. Which of your combination work really lovely together, which ones you're not as happy with. And just play, add different amounts of water and just let them develop naturally. Don't feel that you have to push them into any kind of look. As I said, I do have some other watercolour videos and different ways of using them, different inspiration on using your watercolours. So watch those videos next and I will see you over there. Enjoy playing. Bye!